Making money like a man. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ohima Bonsu. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back to this video, you guys. So we hit 24K. Um, I think it was yesterday. We hit 24K yesterday. Thank you guys so much for 24K. You have no idea what this means to me. Like literally, you have no idea what this means to me, okay? Thank you so, so, so much. So today I'm gonna do a second video on the Juvia's Place I am magic foundations and concealers you guys so the first time I did it I used the shade 120 there's no way you're gonna watch that video and tell me I didn't use too much of that of that foundation because I put a dot here and I spread it out and I put a dot here and when I put it on I said this foundation is too full coverage you know later when I'm watching the video and I can see that I use entirely too much okay anyway before we go any further let me go ahead and uh I'm also gonna do a wear test in this video for you guys like you requested so we can see what these two are all about Also, let me know down below in the comments if you want to see Comparison of this foundation and concealer to any other foundation and concealer So if you want to see what shade I use this time and how how much I use because My first one was entirely too full coverage and how it wears then keep on watching Okay, so let me hijack my own video and you know, I'm gonna do two videos in one. I'm gonna do the eyeshadow look in the video as well. And then we're gonna do the Juvia's Place video, okay? Because I feel like it's already too late for me to do a video for these guys by themselves. I'm gonna include them in this video so that I'm gonna do... So LA Girl came out with two eyeshadow palettes called the LA Girl Hoped Heat Palettes, okay? So this one is the... I can't find the names of these guys. Oh, here they are. So this one is the Aloha Vibes palette. And this one is the VK Everyday palette, okay? So this is what the Aloha Vibes palette looks like. And this is what the VK Everyday palette looks like. This palette really is calling out to me. Like the green in here is doing something to me. The green is calling my name, you know? I'm blending out my eyelids again. I'm taking Aloha Vibes. Oh. I'll just hold it. I'm taking Aloha Vibes and I'm taking this shade over here. First impressions, that black in here looks more a little bit like a gray, but it applies black on. It's a very black shade. You can, I can see it. It's, it feels like I don't need to do a lot to it to get it to show. It's very, very pigmented. It's very intense looking and it is showing up beautifully. Blacks sometimes don't show up very well. I don't know why. Sometimes the formula, it just doesn't sit very well on eyeshadow base. It takes a lot to try to get it to stay matte and pigmented, but this one doesn't look like that. I'm taking this shade in the Everyday Vacay or Vacay Everyday Palette. Look at this, like I just swirled my brush around and look what it did, like it's... It's moving. I don't mind palettes that move as long as it's not like an ashy looking palette. I feel like the powders are creamy. How well do they blend together though? So I'm using the Sigma E25 blending brush to blend this out. I'm also taking this shade up here and I'm using that to blend out what I just laid down. So it's a pearlized shade, the first shade that I use to blend out the black. It has, it has pearls in it. It shimmers a bit. I'm going back in to intensify the black that I lay down. And I'm using a random brush for this. I'm also going to use the same brush to blend out the edge of this black a little bit to blend in with the transition shade that I lay down. Intensify the black a bit. I feel like the transition shade is a very simple blend shade. It's like essentially it looks like a black smoky eye blend. That's it, like that's literally it, okay? I'm gonna cut my crease off camera because I don't want to, you know, be bugging you guys with this. <laughs> I don't want to be bugging you guys with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my crease off camera and I will come back. I'm in denial, you guys. Like, I always say that green, I don't like how green looks on me and I don't like it and I don't like it. But it seems like every time there's a green in a palette, that's what I go for. I'm very sure that I'm in denial that green is my favorite color. I went ahead and I blended the corners of the crease that I cut with the black. So 
so that it didn't have a line over there. Oof, blended everything in. And now I'm going in with that green. I'm putting that green, it's it's almost like a green glitter shade that's in the palette. I'm putting that all over where I cut my crease. I'm using the Benai GB8 brush. Okay, so do you see this little rust color in the corner over here? I use some of the yellow shimmer shade that's in the palette. So I'm taking some of that yellow shade and I'm putting that directly on the outer parts of this look. Okay, like so. I'm just placing it and blending it out. It's a much smoother shimmer than the green, so it's very easy to blend that into it. Taking some green and blending the edges of that out. I'm taking the black shade and I'm going to blend over the yellow that we just laid down or the gold that we just laid down. Making money like a mint. Just lightly blend over and that gives you that rust shade that you get in between to give you the transition into your green. I always feel like this eye look does not look good on me. So I'm taking this shade over here and I'm just gonna blend that directly into the middle of the green. After I wanted the green to pop out a lot, I'm also putting another shade in there to like dismantle it, right? I know, it's crazy. Okay, so for those of you that haven't seen my Juvia's Plates video, I did swatch the foundation initially and I figured out which one I thought matched me better. But whenever I sat down to actually make the video, my opinion changed and I picked a different shade as my shade match. Today I'm gonna try out the shades that I didn't try on my first video and I'm going to pick one and see which one I think, which one I think is a better match. Um, I'm This is the shade 140 Angola and I'm gonna swatch that on my face. And the next one is the shade 130 Mali. Mali is a warm undertone, if I'm not mistaken. Shade 140 Angola matches my chest very well. Like it blends into my chest. And the shade 130, I mean, looking at it, I feel like 120 was still my better match. I feel like to match to my face, 120 still is the shade. Okay, so I will apply one on my face just like I promised you guys because I feel like 140 might be too light for me initially I thought 140 was going to be a good match but whatever I was smoking it, it just wasn't working so I'm taking the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer taking two pumps of that and I'm going to put that on my face this is a mattifying foundation so if you're someone who has dry skin you definitely want to use a bit more of a moisturizing primer on your skin because if not, it's going to be too dry or too tight and you might not like the formula. So second, I'm going to go in with the Touch of Self Canvas and I'm going to apply that to my face. I'm going to blend in this much first because the last time I did this, I put too much foundation on my face. It looked a little off and a lot of people were thinking it was too red, but my face, I just used too much foundation, okay? So I did not lie about my foundation shade. The first shade that I picked was spot on, especially because I could brighten it up with concealers and powders and it would look good. I just used too much on my face. Like this one, look at it. It's already like taking over. And imagine how much I just spotted on my face. Imagine if I'd used more than that. Yeah, 130 is too red, but I promised you guys I would use it so we can see how it looks. Tell me guys what you think. Let me know what you think about the shade match. Also, I didn't use a lot of foundation, so this is what my face looks like now with the shade I have on, and this is the first shade that I tried. Like, let me know down below in the comment which shade you prefer. Also, keep in mind that the first time that I used it, I put too much foundation on my face. Okay, that was entirely too much foundation. I was going to try to blend one, a little bit of 140 in, but that's not gonna look good. Okay, so definitely, if you're somebody who's about my skin tone, but you have a red undertone, this foundation would be perfect for you. The reason why most foundations look red on me is because I have a neutral golden undertone. The way my undertone is set up, if a, if a foundation is neutral, and golden or you know more on the golden side it looks better on me okay and if it's more red it doesn't look as good on me first time i used the concealer shades three and four and then five 
This time I'm gonna use five and six to brighten my face a little bit more. The doe foot on this applicator is humongous. Okay guys, so I'm blending out my concealer with the Juno & Co Cloud Sponge. It's like a foam sponge. The technology on this one is different from the technology on this one and on the rose sponge. Ooh, I'm dropping everything. This is the original sponge, this is the rose sponge, and this is the cloud sponge. The cloud sponge is much softer and I feel like it moves it moves just about the same as the other sponges. It's personal preference. I know there's some people that don't like the fuzzy feeling of the regular Juno & Co sponge. This concealer reminds me a lot of the Too Faced concealer because of how it moves, how it applies, and how it blends. So easy to blend out and the sponge is so soft. Ugh. I'm gonna use the butt of the sponge to blend out the outside of my forehead. I'm setting with the Benai Nutmeg. Okay, so I'm using the Beauty Bakery Almond Powder. Almond would brighten up my under eyes a little bit more. Last time I had thought about using the concealer number one as my contour shade, but I forgot. So I'm going to try it this time and see how it comes out. Hopefully it's not red. You know, if it's red, that would be a problem for me. So I'm just going to blend it up. This is what that looks like. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Look how flawless this is. But guys, I feel like this is a good bronzer. Like this is a good, good bronzer for, for dark skin or for anybody who's my skin tone. And you know, maybe the products that I use also help, but this is a good bronzer. Cause you see how it added that shadow to the corners of my face. I like it. I really, really do like this. I think my hair is like corrupting me right now. I'm taking the blue shimmer shade in here. And I'm putting that on my lower eyelids. I should put some powder down before I do this. But I'm still taking the black shade and I'm going to blend that directly below where I just lay down the blue. Okay, let's get some brows. I'm gonna, you know, do some magic with the brows and... Okay guys, so it is now 3.30. We're just gonna start counting our time from 3.30, okay? From when we finished our skin routine. So from 3.30, six to eight hours later, we're gonna come back and we're gonna check the face and we're gonna see exactly what it looks like, okay? Okay guys, so it is now, I think about 6.30 and it's now three hours since I did my face. I am making some food, so it's very hot over here. And this is what my face is looking like. My head hurts so bad, like this half of my head is like killing me. And it was watering so badly that my, um, my corner lashes came off. <sighs> but yeah, so this is what my face looks like. I, can't, I don't even want to open my eyes, man. My head hurts so badly right now. Like, ridiculously hurting. It looks good. I mean, if you can see it, my smile lines haven't come through. And I've been having these zits. Like, I have one. There's a few over here. There's, like, one over here. They're, like, popping up all over the place. Ooh, boom. They're, like, popping up all over the place. But, yeah, this is it. I'm sweating, actually, so... Yeah. I'll see you guys in four hours. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably see you guys in three more hours and then I'll come back at the eight hour mark and we can, you know, finish the whole thing. I'm not even looking at you right now. My eyes are, oh God. Ooh. Okay guys, so this is me almost nine hours after finishing my foundation routine. Um. <laughs> 
<laughs> the oil pool around my nose is there. Like it is pooled in here, like right here. I can see, I can see the oil very, very clearly. Like you can see the oil very clearly. I mean, when you look at my face straight on, you can see my small line over here is, is out. But that small line is almost always out. Like it's almost out, but I feel like a little bit of foundation. I don't know. I touched it. Damn it. I just touched my face, which took away the oil, which made it a little bit more matte so you can see. I always have visible uh, small lines anytime, anywhere. I think there's only been one incident where my, my small lines haven't come through. <clears throat> you can see that the, the makeup and the base is still pretty good. The only problem is that my my nose area is really, 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 really oily. I did go cook, I fed some kids, I put some kids to bed. It was like a whole mommy night. My face can actually withstand a mommy night. I, I think it can withstand a regular day. Everything is intact, nothing is broken up, nothing is moved, nothing is slipped. I'm just touching my brush, my powder brush to it. I don't have any, I didn't pick up any new powder, I'm just using the brush by itself. And I feel like this actually just refreshes. Oh, my chin was oily too. Wow. My cheeks were very oily too, but I think the most visible that you could see was the um the pool around the corners of my nose. But the foundation on my nose didn't move. I haven't put any new product on the brush. I'm just using the brush by itself to pat the oils off my face. Yeah, my face looks almost new again. Nothing seems to have been misplaced essentially, okay? So this is the wear test, the almost nine hour wear test of the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Foundation and Concealer. Yeah, the first time I use it, I use entirely too much foundation because it is a very full coverage foundation. <laughs> Never again, okay? If you're gonna use this foundation, use it moderately, okay? So yeah, you guys, this is it. This is it for my Juvia's Place I Am Magic foundation and concealer wear test. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I really, really hope that you found this video helpful in some way, shape, or form. Let me know down below in the comments if you loved it. Let me know which shade you picked up because this has been out for a while. Let me know also if you want to see the powders from Juvia's Place so we can set that up for you because you know, you guys know, you guys know I love powders, especially powders I can actually use, okay? I love you guys so much. My headache is gone because I took a pill, I drank a bunch of coffee. I'm okay for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.